opening prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, we come together today to praise your holy name. We know that you are present here with us. Let your spirit flow through each one of us. May we worship you today with sincerity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pamela Browning, and I am the director of children's ministries here at Nicholasville United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us today for our online service. I have a few announcements to make before we get started. First, our church office is operating at reduced at a reduced schedule. We are open from nine until noon, Monday to Friday. And the best way to reach us is to either call during those hours or to email. Stewardship and giving. While things look different at NUMC, we still need your support. Ministries and missions continue even while our church building is closed and things are moving at a much slower pace. Under these current circumstances, you can give online or through snail mail. To give online, go to our webpage, www.numcky.org. At the top right of the webpage, click the Give Online link. That will take you to a secure web page where there are different options as to how you can give. This is a great option for giving. Because of the Mother's Day holiday, we will not be having our drive through offering from noon to 2 p.m. The service this morning will be a little bit different. It has been put together with multiple videos and huge thanks go out to Terry Daddy for putting this all together. Thank you so much, Terry. You are awesome. Finally, we'd like to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day today. Please join me for the call to worship. Psalm 149, one to four. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. 
Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You led me through the fire In darkest night You are closer than no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend Oh yes, I have lived In the goodness Oh God Yes, so my life You have been faithful And all my life You have been so, so good With every breath That I am able I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Yes, I will see all the goodness of God been faithful. Yes, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Lord, you've been so faithful. You've been so good to us, Lord. With every breath, every song we sing, Lord, we will sing on the goodness of God. I will 
will see the goodness I will see of the goodness of God Oh Lord my God When I in awesome wonder Consider all The worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder throughout the universe displays and then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great Savior God to thee. How 
friends. Good morning. Pastor Wade here. Uh, it is a time of the worship service where we gather together in uh, prayer together. So a little different today. I want to share a couple of things and then lead into our prayer time today. Um, first of all, happy Mother's Day. I want to wish all the moms and the mom figures in our lives a very happy and special Mother's Day. We love and appreciate you all so very much. Uh, to help us celebrate today, we have a very special guest who's bringing the message, Reverend Julie Hager-Love who is the president of the Kentucky United Methodist Homes for Children. Uh, she's bringing the message to us today here in just a few moments. Quick note, uh, Julie was scheduled to uh, preach the Sunday after Easter, but with all of the uh, pandemic things and schedules and home quarantine, uh, she didn't preach that day. She's bringing the message to us today, a uh, pre-recorded video that she shared with us. So uh, we thought uh, Julie, her presence, and the fact that she works with kids would just be a great and very appropriate way to celebrate Mother's Day today. So we appreciate Julie and the job she's doing at the Children's Home, and we're looking forward to partnering with her and the home uh, in the future in some creative and fun ways. Again, we're blessed to have her with us bringing the message today. Now, you may have also noticed that uh, our worship format is a little different today and probably is going to be, or at least possibly going to be different next week as well. Uh, let me explain that a little bit. Uh, the service today is made up of several different uh, videos that have been recorded and then woven together, uh, kind of for our final uh, worship uh, online experience here. The reason for that is this. Uh, a couple of our members of our team, of our worship and tech team, uh, have been exposed uh, to the COVID-19 virus, and at least two of us, me included, uh, tested positive. So uh, the good news is no symptoms, uh, asymptomatic, feel fine, no fever, uh, but we're being safe and everyone is uh, taking extra measures to self-quarantine and basically uh, just spend uh, time uh, together uh, with technology, but apart in physical proximity. So again, a little different under the circumstances today. Uh, please pray for the members of our team and, and families who are affected by this uh, directly right now. Now today is uh, Mother's Day and uh, I want to share kind of a special Mother's Day prayer. I did not write this. I found this. It's kind of a special liturgy and prayer for Mother's Day, and it uh, really kind of speaks to us uh, in this moment, in this time. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to uh, ask us to pray. So we'll bow our heads and bow our hearts, and we'll pray together uh, this Mother's Day uh, themed prayer. And then at the end of that, I'll ask you to join me, if you will, in saying together the Lord's Prayer. So let's take this moment and just uh, humble our hearts and uh, quiet ourselves and uh, find a place where we can just be still and go to God. Friends, this morning, join me as we go to the throne of grace and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for this day, a day of love and joy and celebration. We thank you today, Lord, especially uh, for our moms and the mom figures in our lives who have blessed us in so many ways and are still blessing us today. Mothers come in different forms, and we celebrate and bless them all. Today, Father, we acknowledge and give thanks that all of us are sons or daughters. That means we all have a mom. We give thanks for our moms today. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth, we thank you, God, for the mothers of our past. For the women who are working day and night to raise children right, where we thank you for the mothers of today. For the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. We thank you, God, for these mothers who are soon to be. Lord, for the women who have taken in other people's children through adoption, foster care, thank you for these mothers whose hearts are so big. And Lord, for those who are moms but have lost a child, Father, we pray the strength and the grace 
to carry on. We pray for comfort and peace in their hearts. And Lord, just a gentle reminder that you love them and are walking with them even now. For those women who desperately have wanted children of their own, but instead have chosen to be a mom to everyone else, we thank you, Lord, that they are moms in spirit and in truth. Lord, for those women who have influenced us in so, so many ways, we pray that we will honor them in everything we do. We give you thanks. We give you praise. All these things we ask in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And we take time now to remember the words Jesus taught his disciples to pray when together they prayed by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Amen, friends. Thank you for praying with me. Bless you. And uh, stay with us for the rest of the worship service today. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your 
goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord. nicholasville united methodist church it is so good to be with you even virtually um, I know we all wish it was in person, and I can't wait for the time when I can worship with you in person. Um, early in March, I got to meet with your leadership team and pastor, and it was a great time to start talking about partnerships and possibilities, and I look forward to maybe what's next for us. We are so close physically that I know we can do a lot of ministry together. And thank you for your support for the Kentucky United Methodist Homes for Children, um, both historically and now. We could not do it without you. Um, our ministry is only possible because of people like you, of churches like yours. And um, you can find more information on our website. And we would love to have you come volunteer with us when this is over, come tour. Um, we are all looking forward to the time when social distancing will be a thing of the past and we can be together in new ways again. But it's great to be with you by video and I am excited that we have this opportunity uh, to worship together, even virtually. Um, I want to share one of the scriptures that has guided my ministry here. been here since July. And it's Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 through 5 and 10 through 14. And I'm going to read this for us now. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a child to himself, whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you become change and become like the children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever comes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to share a story um, as we begin of why this um, scripture became so significant for me in my ministry here. Have you ever read a passage of scripture, maybe your whole life or definitely more than once, and you're like, great, great passage of scripture, but then you read it again and then you experience something and you go, oh, that's what this passage means. This is what Jesus meant when he said it. Well, that happened to me early in my ministry here. It was a typical day, um, a day before social distancing, a typical day then. And I was working in my office in Nicholasville and I was working on our budget and on our numbers. And I have to tell you, um, while the state gives us money to care for um, many of our children and youth, they never give us enough. Um, and so sometimes budgeting can be stressful. So I knew it was time to take a break. And um, so I left my office and I walked over to the dining hall at our new campus in Nicholasville. And I sat in the back while a staff meeting was taking place. 
And I realized quickly that they were talking about one young lady who I knew had had a hard time the night before. And here's what I saw. All of this gathered staff was talking about this one young lady. This one person shared, you know, I know when she struggles that it's really helpful to have her get out her journal and do some journaling. She responds really well to that. And another person shared, I've noticed that she has more trouble at night. We need to give her a bit of extra attention then. And they went round and round the circle sharing about how to help this one young lady. And all I could think as I sat there was, this is what Jesus meant when he said, the good shepherd will leave the 99 and go after the one. Our staff was living the gospel. Your staff was living the gospel. Caring for this one resilient young lady who the world in many ways had said is not important. They were all on board with connecting with her, with letting her know that she was valued, she was important, and she was a child of God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I would have been happy with a 95 on a test, and a 99 would have been even better. I would have been thrilled. It was okay to not get those few points. But Jesus said to us, when it comes to people, when it comes to God's children, 100%, all 100 is what I'm talking about. All are valued. All are loved. A connection with everyone is what I'm after. It's what Jesus said. And in many ways, that's why we were founded. Um, at the, the Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home, our mission is to serve Christ by providing for the physical, emotional, educational, and spiritual needs of children and families. And we were founded by Methodists who, after the Civil War in 1871, said, we have a lot of orphans around us. We have people that God is telling us to reach. And so these Christians said, we are going to follow and go after the one. They felt called to care for people who had been abandoned and were friendless and were lonely. And for almost 150 years, we have served the most vulnerable in our commonwealth. In 2019, we served 954 families through all our ministries, ministries of residential care and independent living for young adults, community-based services, and our work with the Department of Juvenile Justice. Our ministry is varied, and our goal is to reach people in the ways that are most meaningful in their lives. Sometimes it's the little things and ways that we reach people. I want to share a story about work pants. Actually, it is really a story about connection and family. Recently, a young man who was an alumni of our independent living program came to visit the staff to ask for a bit of help. He had just landed a new job, but needed work pants and they weren't in his budget. Our independent living program serves 18 to 21 year olds who were in a ministry like ours or in foster care when they were younger. We provide housing and help with things like jobs and budgeting and counseling. So he came back to the place he knew his home. And of course, because of generous donors like you, we were able to get him the clothes he needed. But more than that, we were able to celebrate with him like a family does. Thank you for caring for this one. This one that Jesus said shouldn't be alone, needs to be loved. Thank you for supporting ministries that help this young man know he wasn't alone. Our community-based services in Lexington and Owensboro provide counseling and other services to help families stay together and be healthier. We serve several grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. One story I love is about a grandmother raising her teenage grandson. 
Our staff was able to help them with how to communicate with each other in the midst of differing generations and understandings of life. And more than that, the grandson wanted to play football. And again, our generous donors, people like you, stepped up and provided the equipment he needed. Also gave him a bus pass so he could get to and from practice. Thank you for caring for this family and helping them know that they are valued and not alone. As I mentioned earlier, the scripture from the Gospel of Matthew has been a, come a guide for me in my ministry. As we think about this scripture and the verses we heard earlier from this 18th chapter, we hear Jesus being serious, serious about taking care of those who were vulnerable during his time and are still vulnerable in our time. As one commentator I read said, Jesus doesn't mince words. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he brought a child to them and said, Whoever welcomes one such child welcomes me. It's interesting that this exchange began with the disciples asking Jesus, Who's greatest? I'm guessing they might have wanted, maybe they were, because they were following him so closely. But Jesus was telling them and telling us and does multiple times through Scripture that humility and caring for the most vulnerable is what's important. N.T. Wright says of this passage, this is what true greatness looks like. It means learning to look at life, at the world, at God, at yourself, through the other end of the telescope. We all find it difficult, particularly a group of youngish men like the disciples, N.T. Wright continues, to think that weakness and vulnerability are anything other than things to be ashamed of. But humility is what counts in God's kingdom. Jesus said, whoever welcomes a child welcomes me. And remember, I'm always going to go after that one. 99% isn't good enough. I'm after 100%. Humility and knowing that are what count in my kingdom. Today we celebrate Mother's Day, a celebration that was founded in the U.S. by a woman named Anna Jarvis, who at the turn of this century, she, when she wanted to honor her mother, who was a nurse who cared for soldiers in the Civil War, she, she cared for, for soldiers on both sides of the Civil War. She wanted to honor her mother, so she held a memorial at a Methodist church in Virginia to honor her mom, and then she worked to help make it a national holiday. I love how our children's home and Mother's Day both have roots in the Civil War. Methodists finding a way to say, let's care for those who Jesus said were the most important, and let's celebrate women who often care for them. I honestly can think of nothing that has taught me more and continues to teach me humility more than being a mother. Parenting is not for the faint of heart. It is both hard, the hardest job I've ever had, as I say, but one that brings me the most joy. At the same time, I also want to acknowledge that this can also be a very painful day for many of us. Um, I've walked with many friends through the pain of infertility. I know the pain of losing um, a child. We had a miscarriage with our first baby and the pain of losing my mother. So on this day, I want to acknowledge that while there is joy, there is also pain. And that sort of sums up life in general right now, doesn't it? During these days, we um, are finding things so, so difficult, but I hope you are also finding moments of joy and celebration. I don't know about you, but I go between being thankful for my safety for, all, for the housing, for a place to live, for food on the table, um, to being frustrated and scared and overwhelmed. God walks with us 
through all of this, through the pain of loss, through the pain of this pandemic. And we remember what Scripture says. Jesus said, everyone is important. Those who mourn and are afraid, those who are filled with joy, and even the one who is lost, all are important and special to God. Remember that young, one young lady I told you about earlier who had a hard night and our staff was discussing how to help her. She left our care around the beginning of the year. Youth are usually with us in our residential program six to nine to 12 months, depending on their needs and where they can go next. But before she left, she and I got to have a t discussion and she came to me and she said, Miss Julie, did you hear that I'm gonna be leaving soon? And I said, I heard. I want you to remember that you are loved, that I pray for you daily and others are praying for you and know that you will be missed. And she looked at me and she said, I know that I am loved. And I know that people are praying for me, which is pretty incredible because when she first came to us, she wanted nothing to do with God. So she again, she said, I know I'm loved. I know I'm prayed for. And I really do think I will be missed because I'm kind of a favorite around here. Isn't that what we want for all the children in our lives? Isn't that what we do, why we celebrate Mother's Day? We want all the children in our life to know that they are a favorite. All the children in our commonwealth and around the world to know that they are a favorite and that they are loved by God. Thank you for providing support so this young lady would know what it was like to be a favorite, to know what it was like to be a child of God. This is what we are called to do by Jesus, to love and help people we know and that we don't know, to know that they aren't alone, to know that they are loved, to know that we are always going to follow Jesus and go after the one. It's both a responsibility for us and a real gift and opportunity we have. I want to close with one more story. Just a few weeks ago, our chaplain asked the teens who live with us about their definition of love. And sitting at a table far away from the others, one girl responded with her painful truth. She said, love is a lie. Soon after being invited to participate more by the chaplains, and by other staff, she began engaging more, this young lady did. And several weeks later, the kids were asked how God showed them kindness. And astoundingly, after only a short time in our holistic programs, this same young lady answered by saying, God gives me the kindness of hope. God gives me the kindness of hope. Thank you for your support so that our youth can know that they are a favorite, so that they can know that God gives them the kindness of hope. For almost 150 years, Methodists have been serving Christ by providing for the physical, emotional, educational, and spiritual needs of children and families. Thank you for being a part of this. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus.
Friends, again, we are glad you worship with us today. Uh, so glad you're with us online, connected by technology. At this time, let me share a, a brief benediction, a blessing, a prayer. And this one comes uh, from Psalm 33, verses 20 to 22. Hear these words of blessing as we pray together. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Join us again next week online. Blessings. Blessings.